for this concept of it, like, kind of with the refraction, when you, um, if your incident ray is at a, some critical angle, then you'll get um, total internal reflection. Mm -hmm. So what I got from class was that, so if you have a, a ray coming in at the critical angle, then it, it'll refract at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. But then, I don't see what like, the like, significance of that is. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty important topic. First of all, um, I said we haven't really talked about this. Yeah, we never got a chance to get into that. So when n is big, is theta big or small in Snell's law? Have we talked about that? Uh, no. Maybe not. Oh, we haven't really talked about Snell's law at all. Right? That's a whole big thing. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, so first of all, when theta is big, is the sine of theta big or small for an acute angle? Yeah, we're only going to deal with acute angles in physics. And we know that in an acute angle, a big theta, as theta gets bigger, the sine of theta gets bigger. Because the sine is your y coordinate. Well, a bigger theta is like this. Well, you can see this point has a bigger y coordinate. All right, so these are directly related. So as theta gets bigger, what happens to the n? Uh, it gets smaller. Yeah, if theta 2 is bigger than theta 1, you can see that n2 has to be smaller than n1, because otherwise, how could these both sides be equal to each other? Yeah. These, these terms can't both be bigger, or the right-hand side would be bigger than the left-hand side. This is actually a really important idea to just memorize, although you can figure it out from Snell's law. There's an inverse relationship between theta and n. We should really have memorized an inverse relationship between theta and n. That means when you move into a medium with a smaller n, your theta gets bigger. And remember the theta is the theta with the normal. So this means if you move into a medium with a smaller n, the light bends away from the normal. And if you move into a medium with a bigger n, the light bends towards the normal. for air. Because remember, n also tells you how much the light got slowed down by the medium. But air hardly slows down the light at all. So it has an n of 1. Remember, that's the smallest that n could ever be. We talked about that. And this is the smallest that n could be. So is the n for the water bigger or smaller than 1? 1.3. Yeah, you got that memorized. But it has to be bigger. Good. So what's going to happen to this light? Go ahead and draw this ray is um, draw this ray and draw whether, um, how it's going to look compared to this one. So Try to exaggerate the effect. The right. So draw that. that. That's good. That's a good exaggerated picture. That's a good exaggerated picture. Since this has the smaller n, since this is a smaller n, it has to have the bigger theta. So it's good to exaggerate that and show a great big theta over here. So this is what we were talking about. When you move into a medium with a smaller index of refraction, the light bends away from the normal. By the way, every time you hit this, uh, a surface between two things, there's both refraction and reflection. So at the same time that this refraction is happening, there's also going to be this reflection. By the way, what's this angle? All right, we're not gonna, I'm gonna erase that now, but you should keep in mind, usually when you're doing a problem, you focus only on the reflection or only on the refraction. Um, but usually, both of those are happening. Both the reflection and the refraction are happening. Now, what would happen then if I increase theta 1 to here? What's going to happen to this ray? This is going to bend even more to say, like here, right? The bigger, you can see there's a direct relationship between theta 1 and theta 2 from Snell's law. The bigger you make theta 1 on the left, the bigger you have to make theta 2 on the right. If the left-hand side of the equation is getting bigger, the right-hand side of the equation has to get bigger. So if we're increasing this theta 1, 
then the angle in the air has to bend even more from the normal. But there's a problem. This can't keep bending forever. Eventually, it's going to be just skimming along the surface. Eventually, this theta 2 is going to be so big that we're just skimming along the surface. What does it mean if the light is skimming along the surface? It basically means it hasn't been transmitted at all. If the light is just skimming along the surface, it just hasn't been transmitted at all. Um, there, um, there hasn't been any light transmitted. So there's no light refracted. We, say, we could say there's no refraction. Maybe refraction means bending, so it's better to say there's no transmittal of the light because it's been refracted so much that it's skimming along the surface. But another word for that is, remember, there would still be reflection. Uh, there was always reflection all along, but if there's only reflection and no transmittal, we would have total internal reflection. Uh, so that's where that term total internal reflection comes from. Why, um, so there's always, um, there's pretty much always some reflection, but usually there's reflection and transmittal. But when we get to this critical angle over here, where there's no transmittal anymore because the transmitted ray is going parallel to the surface, and now we would only have the reflected ray. We don't usually draw that, we don't have the reflected ray. So total internal reflection happens when there's no transmittal because the refracted ray is bent at 90 degrees or more. Um, so let's actually get the equation for that um, over here. So we're going from n1 sine theta 1 equals n2. Now, um, we want to figure out what our critical angle is. So it's sine theta 2 90. So it's just 1. So then the so sine theta critical is divided by n2 over n2. All right, yeah. This is a formula in the book. But this would be, would be fair for him to ask you to prove on the test. This, because the proof is just basically understanding total internal reflection. If you understand what total internal reflection means, you should be able to solve this angle, this equation for the critical angle. When do you first get total internal reflection when theta 2 is 90? And of course, we would still have it if theta 2 is bigger than 90. All right, because then there's certainly, uh, then if, the light, if any light was transmitted, it would be going this way, which is impossible. So that just basically means there's, again, no transmittal of the light. There would be no transmittal of the light. So if theta 1 is theta c or bigger, there's going to be only reflection and no transmittal. And this is a, would be a fair proof to ask you for in the test, because the, uh, all you need to prove this is just to understand that the condition for total internal reflection is just the second angle is 90 or more. OK, some other things that we could focus on here is then when you get total internal reflection when you're going from when you're going into a medium with a bigger n or a smaller n? Smaller. Yeah, because you only get total internal reflection when the second angle is too big. Well, the second angle can only be too big if the second n is too small. So this only occurs when you're moving into a medium with a lower n. Because remember, because n is getting smaller, that's what's making this new angle bigger. And it could potentially be so big that it's 90 degrees. And then you don't get any transmittal at all. You can also see that mathematically from the formula. Um, n2 has to be less than n1, because sines can't be bigger than 1. A sine can't be bigger than 1. So if someone didn't understand this, um, they might try to figure out the critical angle when you were going from the air to the water. Well, if you tried to figure out the critical angle when you're going from the air to the water, you would do this, and your calculator would give you an error message, because there is no theta that gives you this sign, and that would just tell you there is no total internal reflection. But you shouldn't even get to that point in the first place. You should just always remind yourself you can only have total internal reflection when you're moving into the smaller end. So by the way, notice that here's a very common application. This can happen when water is coming up from underneath, uh, when light is coming, say, from the, um, the bottom of a pond. It's coming from the bottom of a pond, and instead of getting out to the outside, um, it has total internal reflection. But we don't need to worry about any of the light in the air experiencing total re internal reflection on the pond. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so how could this be tested? Well, you might just see a problem that asks you to find the critical angle. 
Well, you just plug into this formula, making sure that you're moving into a medium with a slower, a uh, smaller angle of reflection. Uh, like I said, I think it would be fair to ask you to prove this equation because it's just based on understanding um, total internal reflection. You might have to explain the concept in words. Well, we went through that. If, if he asks you to explain something, try to draw pictures yeah. to explain it. 